So welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Today. Hi, welcome to Cooking Today. I'm glad you're with me. Glad that you come every day. I appreciate it a lot. We are making today a fancy, delicious, easy grilled chicken sandwich. And I know that doesn't sound very exciting because, you know, grilled chicken sandwich is just a grilled chicken sandwich. But there's this restaurant in Fayetteville that I've been going to since I was in college. And y'all may know the one. It's kind of underground, really neat, kind of a Fayetteville staple. They make a sandwich called the Derek Special. Yay! If you know it, then you just got very excited because we're going to show you how to make those at home today. And this sandwich is what I've always gotten there. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever gotten anything else. It's that good. This is grilled chicken and I'm putting bacon on mine. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a remix so that it's really mine, but the flavors and the satisfaction are just as good. And if you know the place where I'm talking, then you need to go there and you need to finish it off with a grasshopper crepe. That's my, that's my jam at that place. A Derek special and those grasshopper crepes are amazing. Such a good meal. But today I'm just gonna kinda do a little remix of it here at home so that you can kinda make one for yourself if you can't get downtown. So, I am about to, I'm gonna rinse the gunk off my hands and then we're gonna turn that skillet on and brown us some good crisp, I did thick cut bacon. I have a grill outside preheating, getting all nice and hot so we get some beautiful like dark sear yummy marks on our chicken. Okay, let's get that going. Mm. I've already done a little bit of bacon as a matter of fact um, before you got here, but we're just going to finish it off because you can never have too much bacon on a sandwich. Um, so we're going to have those things going and then all I have here are some chicken breasts. And you know, these, you could probably on these, these thicker ones, get your knife in there and have them like we've done for um, chicken parm and I'm trying to think what else we've done, something else we've done. Oh, a salad where we've kind of battered them and halved them and all that. But today I'm just gonna take my mallet and I'm just gonna kind of pound those especially fat ends. And we're not looking for them to be paper thin, but I'm just using my hand just to be sure that there aren't any of those real firm, thick, thick places. And it's gonna make it more tender, easier to grill. And it's gonna be easier to chomp into on a pretty Kaiser roll or a yummy brioche bun. Okay, these feel pretty good to me. And here are these parchment sheets. Y'all have used these like gangbusters. I've, you've seen them on here. Those pre-cut sheets, they are awful handy. Not exciting television. <laughs> okay, I'm just kind of giving a little feel. I can hear my bacon starting to sizzle. I think we're good. Kind of got a fat spot right there. I'm gonna go ahead and give that one more pound. Ooh, I hate the mess of pounding chicken. I almost didn't even do it because it, I just really hate it. But this is my little system where I put it inside a sheet pan. You know how I feel about my sheet pans and my parchment sheets. And there's really no mess, which I love. Okay, now I'm certain that there are a lot of very fancy marinades that you can marinate your chicken in. And if you've got one you love, knock yourself out. Do you know what our favorite is? Italian dressing. Every time we love it on chicken and we have tried 10 other things and added seasonings and spices and all kinds of things to our chicken. This is our favorite every time and it is always in our refrigerator and it's as easy as pie. So I went ahead before I pounded these and trimmed off those, you know, the yucky parts, kind of those little pieces that hang off and some of the fatty parts and kind of cleaned them up so that they were more like a nice, kind of evenly shaped chicken breast. And then we pounded them. 
And now I'm just going to cover them in Italian dressing and then kind of give it a good rub. Now, ideally, you would let this marinate. Mm. Hey, and I get zesty. If it says zesty, tangy, fancy, this one says lively and rustic. It just means it's like loaded with more seasonings. Get that. That's the one that's going to have the most flavor. And to this, you can add salt. You could add garlic powder. You could really just jazz it up if you wanted to. But for the sake of just showing you how simple these sandwiches can be, I just did the, the dressing and the good little pound. And we're just going to call it a day. Now, you should let this marinate for probably at least a half an hour or so. But listen, it is delicious if you marinate it overnight. So good. We're going to do these for just a little bit. When we come back, we're going to go ahead and have them grilled. I'm going to run out real quick while you're away and stick them on a grill and get pretty marks on them. And then check our bacon. And then when we come back, I'm going to make this amazing sauce that goes on them and toast our buns and our, get our toppings together. It's a good sandwich, y'all. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Hi, welcome back. Look at this beautiful chicken. We just went outside and grabbed it. It is about as hot as it can be out there, y'all. Holy smokes. You know, Arkansas summers, it's like a wet blanket. So we have our chicken grilled, got beautiful marks on it. And you know that easy Italian dressing is just such a piece of cake um, to marinate in. Really easy. So what I like to do while this is still hot is just while it's still kind of juicy and smoking, I like to always do a little bit of salt because it'll kind of get on there and kind of melt. Such a yummy little extra bite. And now I'm taking this baby Swiss. That looks, I can't tell if that's one piece or two pieces. I'm gonna say it's one. And I'm gonna lay these pieces of cheese down on top of this meat while it's a little bit hot still. I'm gonna do two per. Mm. And then I have my oven preheated to just a real low temperature, like 200, 250, something super low like that. I'm gonna spread these out. So that I can cover these with foil and let them sit and rest while I get the rest of all my, um, you know, toppings and bread and everything ready to go. And it'll help just kind of melt that cheese down. Mm -hmm. That is delish right there. Okay, I'm just gonna, tint this. We don't want it to really touch it, which it may touch a little bit. That always just kind of happens, but we just want to tint just enough so that it kind of holds the heat in, but we don't want it to lay on the cheese because then it would pull our cheese off. Okay, I'm just going to set these in here for a few minutes and let them stay warm. We have gorgeous, I mean beautiful, dark, dark, crispy brown, yummy, thick cut bacon is going to go on our sandwiches and then we have leaf lettuce and I just like this regular old kind of curly ended one um, you know what else is beautiful on this is the the red leaf lettuce you know the one that's green here and it has that little bit of like a darker red around the outside that makes a beautiful sandwich you could use butter lettuce you could use whatever but I just went ahead and had a few pieces ready and we also have some Roma tomatoes. Now, you know how I feel about Arkansas tomatoes. They're the best. I mean, those garden tomatoes that come out in like, I don't know, July and August, and they're just perfection. I mean, mouth-watering. I love those. So if you've got a big old slab of an Arkansas tomato, then you put that on there. But you can almost never go wrong with a Roma tomato, a little plum tomato in pretty much year round. I mean, you can almost always get a good Roma. So when in doubt, that's what I use if I can't get to my farmer's market or whatever. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of slices of these little tomatoes we're gonna put out here. We're gonna line up our sandwich and get it all layered and pretty. But we are gonna kinda get our fixins set. Now, one of the best things about this sandwich that I just kind of trade out just a little bit, um, this sandwich that I love at that restaurant that I was telling y'all about, it 
has a honey mustard on it. So I'm kind of making a homemade honey mustard on, on this sandwich. But I'm going to add a little horseradish to it just for that little bit of zing that is so good. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what we're eating at my house. If there's not a little bit of heat to it, then my boys and my husband, they add heat. So if it were a sandwich, they would add horseradish. If it were, oh, I don't know, Mexican food or Italian food, they would add red pepper flakes. If it's something else, they add eggs, they add Tabasco. So I figured I would just kind of cut out the middleman and go ahead and add a little heat to this delicious honey mustard. Now this is going to be something that really is kind of up to you. This is your taste. I'm going to do about equal parts Dijon mustard and honey, maybe a little bit less honey. So we probably have about a half a cup of honey of Dijon mustard. And I'm probably going to do about a quarter cup, I would say, maybe. Yeah, about a quarter cup of the honey. And then I'm going to give that just a good little whisk. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Don't y'all love honey mustard and chicken? And then we've got that salty, salty bacon, that creamy Swiss cheese that's got that just a little bit of like a something else that gives you a little, I just don't know, I love that little bite that is in a Swiss. And then to give it our little heat, stings your nose a little, we're going to add a little tiny bit of delicious horseradish. Now this stuff's potent. So I've said this before about seasonings and spices and all of that. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. And so I'm going to do about a teaspoon and mix it and taste it. And then if I want a little more, I can already tell you I'm going to want more. But if I want a little more, I'm going to add another half teaspoon or so as I go until it is exactly what I want. Mm going for it today. So I'm going to whisk this together. When we come back, I'm going to show you how we pile up this gorgeous sandwich and we're going to make beautiful Lipton Arnold Palmers with mint. When we come back, this is Cooking Today. Ice tea sponsored by Lipton. Experience the local sounds, sights, and taste of the Fayetteville Farmer's Market. Do you know the producer behind your food? What about how far away your food was grown? Local to us means your food is harvested hours before traveling less than 60 miles to our market. Enjoy music, chef demos, and special events while you shop for locally grown produce, meats, cheeses, flowers, artisan crafts, fine art, and more. Visit us Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on The Square. The Fayetteville Farmer's Market, 100% local and loved. Hello, welcome back. We have some good smelling sandwiches going in here. We've got that chicken with that cheese melting on it in the oven. It's not really even cooking it anymore. It's just kind of in a holding position while we kind of get some of the rest of our stuff going. Let me tell you, one of my favorite drinks that I just feel like goes great with this sandwich, it just seems like summertime and sitting on the porch and all that good stuff, is a Teamonade is what we kind of call it around here. It's technically an Arnold Palmer, which is partly tea with a splash of lemonade. So I'm just going to show y'all how easy it is to make, first of all, sweet tea in the first place. And I've done this here before um, just to show you how easy it is to make tea. I make a batch of sweet tea at least twice a week. We drink a whole gallon of sweet tea almost every time our crew is here together. We really do. We kind of burn through it. It's so good. So here's what I've got. I just went ahead and boiled some water on the stove, probably four, four or six cups or so. Get it all out there. And in the bottom of my pitcher is about a cup and a half, two cups of sugar. Let me get my spoon. So what I do is pour that hot water on that sugar and give it a stir so that it will dissolve. As a matter of fact, there have been people on Instagram lately asking me about a good sweet, if I have a good sweet tea recipe. So here you go. This is how I do it in my sleep. Okay, so I've given that a nice stir. So it's nice and dissolved. And then I'm gonna make a gallon of sweet tea. It's just kind of how I always do it and it's in this big plastic pitcher. I'm just taking four of the Lipton tea bags family size tea bags is what they're called. So they're a little bit bigger than just those little personal ones, you know, that just would go in like your teacup. 
and I drop wrapper and all. I don't even mess with hanging them over the side or anything. I just drop them right down in there and I usually do four of these family sized tea bags in this really, really good sugary water. And then I'm gonna let that steep for, I mean, I don't know, I usually do about 12 minutes, 10 minutes or so. Any longer, I kind of feel like it's, um, I don't know, too strong. I just feel like, I don't know, I have settled on 10 or 12 minutes, y'all, that's about it. And so I leave my spoon in there and I kind of set those, set them on those uh, tea bags to kind of press them down and make sure that they stay in there. Then all I would do after this is top that off either with ice or with water and call it a day. I mean, obviously you take your tea bags out, but that's how I do it. A cup and a half to two cups of sugar in the bottom of a whole bunch of hot water, stirred around, four Lipton family size tea bags, dropped right down inside, let it steep for 10 to 12 minutes, and then top that off to make your gallon. It's just, it's foolproof, y'all, it's so good. And people talk about my sweet tea, so this is a pretty good little blend, so you might try it this way. But while these do their thing, this is my next batch. We've already kind of worked through one batch, so this is my backup batch. So that's gonna do its thing. And look what I already have. Tea that I made yesterday and lemonade. Delicious, delicious, delicious combo. And this is called an Arnold Palmer because that famous golfer that we all know, it's been around forever and ever, it's his favorite drink. And the rumor has it that he was in at some golf course one time and he had asked the waiter for tea, sweet tea, with a splash of lemonade. And so the lady beside him thought, oh, that sounds really good. So she ordered, I'll have the Arnold Palmer drink because she heard him say that that's what he wanted. And so pretty much, legend has it, that's how this drink was formed. It is non-alcoholic. The joke is that if it's, an, if it's alcoholic and you add a little vodka or something to it, it's not even a joke. It's actually like a published drink. Then they call it the John Daly, <laughs> which is just so funny. He didn't mind. It's good stuff. So you could splash a little bourbon in here, a little vodka, whatever else sounds fun to you. So it's a little bit more tea than lemonade. So I've done just about three quarters. We're gonna splash the top with a little lemonade. Y'all, this is so good. I make these all the time. I actually order them at restaurants a lot. And then I love to do a little mint in the top. And I give this, just with my fingers, a little rub. Just a little rub with my fingers, a mash. Because it, oh, I can smell it up here. It releases that good spearminty oil that's inside those and I drop those down like I'm going to drink probably both of those. <laughs> they are so good. They smell fantastic. I'm going to rub that one a little bit more too. Delicious, beautiful. Aren't those pretty teamonades? Look how nice those are. Arnold Palmer's made with our Lipton tea bags. So let me get this out of the way. What we're going to do next, back to our little sandwiches, is I'm going to go ahead and get our chicken out of the oven and then I'm gonna have our bun and I'm gonna give it a little toast on one side when we come back we're gonna build our sandwiches and sip our um, Lipton Arnold Palmer teamonades and have quite a good good meal this is cooking today hi welcome back y'all wish you were here this is delicious look how fresh that pretty lettuce and those pretty sliced tomatoes and I went ahead in the rake and cut up a little super skinny purple onion. This bacon's been killing me all day long sitting here while we've been doing this. It just begs to be eaten. It's thick cut and delicious and salty and smoky. I've toasted this little Kaiser roll. You can do that with a little butter. You could stick it in your toaster. You could do it in a skillet. You could put them in the oven. You could do whatever you want to it. Season it up even if you want. And then, we're gonna sauce it. Now you do not wanna skimp on that sauce. My mouth's watering, and I'm not even kidding. You do not wanna skimp on the sauce. It's so good, and you want it to be a little bit drippy, a little bit drippy with the juices in that chicken. 
Ugh, wait till you see the chicken. Okay, look, I've got a pretty good slather right there. Ready for this? One, two, three. Oh my goodness, is that pretty or what? Again, mouth watering. We're gonna layer a beautiful piece of chicken right on top. You could have these if you feel like they're too big for your bun, you can kind of cut them into pieces. You could cut them into halves if you would like to, to fit your bun. Oh, look at that. And that cheese is kind of all melted around and puddled in there in the oven. I'm gonna do a little bit of thin purple onion, a pretty piece of lettuce, a couple of pieces of these tomatoes, and I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper those just a little bit because you want there to be just a little bit of seasoning on those. Bacon that we've just been waiting on. Oh my gosh, look at that. And a top, and if you wanted to put more sauce on it, you just go right ahead. At home, Derek Specials and Team and Aids, Arnold Palmer's. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Kitchenware is provided by Una Mays. Groceries provided by Harps, Hometown Fresh. Online Elements, sponsored by Fayetteville Farmers Market.